this window air conditioner compressor will fail. Or at least that's what a lot of people commented in my video about using this compressor. But I've also gotten a lot of comments from people saying that they've been using a fridge compressor as an air compressor for years and years and years. So uh, take your pick. And if it fails, it's not like I'm going to be out a whole lot of time or money. The first reason that it'll fail is because it's running without any coolant in there and the coolant is what cools the motor. Not so sure about that. The other reason it'll fail is because it uses PoE oil and PoE oil attracts moisture out of the air and that will cause the compressor to rust. That one I'm more worried about. The way these compressors are arranged inside is most of the space is taken up by the motor. There's some oil on the bottom and that oil actually gets sucked through a small hole in the shaft up to the scroll compressor which continuously lubricates that. And I want to change that oil so I want to get that oil out. And I figure the best way to do that is to flip the compressor upside down and let it run a little bit so it'll pump up the oil. Now I've tried sucking some oil in through the intake here, but I think most of it just gets stuck in the desiccant in here. So instead I'm just going to force it in through here. And I'm going to replace that lubricant with mineral oil because mineral oil is what the old compressors used to use, the ones that ran on the old Freon. So I'm just going to squeeze that down the output pipe. And I know the output pipe actually connects to the inside of the tank because if I block the output for a bit, afterwards a lot of air escapes so that tank is connected to the output pipe. And let's see how much of the oil is going to come back out. Not very much of it, so I'm pretty sure that oil is in there good. So I'm getting a few drops coming out, but uh, overall not a whole lot of oil that came out. I think that should purge most of the remaining oil in the output line. Now in an air conditioner, some of the oil actually ends up circulating around with the refrigerant, which is okay because it all comes back to the compressor. But if I use it as an air compressor, of course, that oil ends up going out with the air. Question is, how much oil? So I'll try to catch some of that oil that's coming out with a piece of paper towel. So this is where it's blowing the air through coming out of the compressor and holding it up against the light you can tell it's a bit oily. So there is some oil that comes out with the air and I have actually a particle counter running in the shop measuring periodically and the particle counts in the shop do go up when this thing is running so it does produce a little bit of oil mist. Not nearly as much as a frying pan does but there is oil that comes out. Fortunately, uh, mineral oil has no known health impacts, but uh, neither does the POE oil that it had in there in the first place, so I don't think it's something I need to worry about too much. Now the next criticism is that uh, this thing will overheat because it doesn't have any cooling, because people I think imagine that this thing is filled with liquid refrigerant, which it isn't. Even when used as an air conditioner, this thing only contains gas refrigerant. It only condenses in the condenser and evaporates before it gets back into the compressor and this just compresses the gas. But under normal operating conditions the pressure of the coolant even coming in is going to be 10 atmospheres or more so basically the gas is going to be a lot denser in that thing when it's running as a air conditioner than if I'm just trying to compress air with it. And the coolant coming in would be in gas form but about 10 times the pressure and being fairly cool having come off of the evaporator and presumably that would cool things a bit and there's also some fan blades inside to spread the heat around a bit so that sort of cooling I don't have but then again most of this tank is actually going to be filled with compressed refrigerant because basically the whole tank is a bit of a pressure reservoir I know that because when I plug up the output while it's running there's quite a lot of air that comes out so it's definitely the compressed side that's in the tank and of course after compressing gas gets pretty warm so it would get fairly hot inside whereas if I'm only compressing a little bit of air it doesn't get that hot inside so I might be okay. 
and just compressing air, producing not so much pressure, I'm only drawing maybe 260 watts, and that's at 50 psi. Let's let that get up a little higher. So now at 150 psi, I'm only drawing 340 watts, and of course the air is going to be a lot more dense in here now at that pressure, which means it'll transfer the heat much better. And it's really not that much power, so I might be okay. So it might overheat if I run it continuously for a long time, but uh, I only plan on using this thing for experiments, so it may or may not fail. So I made uh, another pressure fitting. This one leaks a bit less than the old one, and I just got it up to 300 psi. I'd also swapped out the pressure gauge because the old one only went to 200. So, what can I do with 300 psi? Hmm... Well, I've never been able to explode one of these 2 liter pop bottles and somebody emailed me saying that they couldn't get one to blow even at 150 psi. But at 300? To make it more interesting, I filled it with shavings so you can see something actually burst out of it. Hooked up to the nozzle to the compressor, let's give it a shot. 100 psi? Well, my nozzle just pulled out of the cap, so I made this bracket to hold it in. Hundred psi. Oh, rats! That's the sound of leakage. Maybe this bit of heat shrink tubing will prevent leakage against the hole that's gotten a little bit too big. One hundred and fifty PSI. Ow. Next try is a bicycle valve, which is going to be on this filler thing with this bracket to hold that in place. Damn it, it's leaking again. So I just can't get past the hundred PSI. I just keep getting leakage. So I've had enough of this experiment. Well, I still gotta do something destructive with all that pressure. And in my last video, I shot a marble out of my air gun, which weighs 5 grams. But this metal slug weighs 20. So I'm gonna try to pump this air gun up to 300 psi, but uh, I don't want it in my hands while it's doing that, so... I've got this thing clamped on there, I've got a clamp to hold down, and the string to pull the trigger, and a piece of wood to shoot at. And I hear leakage, so we'll go quick. And I just realized uh, I must have uh, closed off on here, because I've still got lots of pressure in the tank here, so bummer about that. Here's my projectile, here's the 2x4. I guess I did go through it. I don't know what the pressure was that I had. That metal slug feels like cheating, so this time a marble against six pieces of particle board. Uh-oh, I got leakage, so I might as well pull the trigger now. Not going up anymore. Well, that only penetrated one and cracked the second. Still got lots of pressure in the tank, so this is not uh, on there properly anymore. Try again with a metal slug and some pieces of 2x4. Okay, 300 psi. Here we go. And still, we got pressure in here, so this didn't make proper contact. And it only penetrated it once. And as I've been relieving the pressure right here, I get some water in my hands. And actually, that's no surprise because when you compress air, the humidity is also compressed, but the air's ability to hold water doesn't go up, which means some of it condenses out always inside the compressor tank, or in this case, in here, which is to say I'm gonna get water down here, and I think that'll doom this compressor eventually, but it's been fun playing around with, and it may be good for more experiments, who knows. And one more thing about this type of compressor, they're scroll compressors, which are really clever. They consist of two metal plates with a scroll-shaped ridge on them, one of them is the other way around, 
and when it pumps it just moves one of these in a circular motion like this and that traps a bit of air inside and as it keeps going around and around that pocket is forced to the inside also gets smaller as it gets to the middle and then the uh, outlet is just in the middle so once it gets to the middle it can go at the output the thing with that though is the air gets compressed even if the output pressure is the same so they're not very efficient for small amounts of compression but in an air conditioner you always have at least a 2 to 1 compression so these are very ingenious in that they're a low vibration, very quiet and continuous torque on the motor so much better than a piston compressor but the way they're lubricated, uh, some of the lubricant I think always ends up being a bit of a mist in the output gas which is probably why they're not used for things like shop compressors.